Hi, I'm Matt for blogtowatch.com and I'm coming to you today from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about Wilk Watchworks. Now, before we dive into that, uh, I just wanted to mention, you know, Canada has a great legacy of exporting talent. Um, you know, music greats such as Rush, uh, to modern day favorites like Drake, Justin Bieber, well, sorry about that one. But, you know, we do have a long history of practicing things and becoming very good at them. Um, and I've long had a theory as to why this is. It's bloody cold. And rather than stay outdoors and let the wind shear the lips from your face, a lot of Canadians go indoors during the winter months and practice or tinker away at some sort of craft until they become quite accomplished at it. And Scott Wilk is one such craftsman. We're gonna to talk to you today about Wilk Watchworks. My name is Scott Wilk. I am the owner of Wilk Watchworks. I make custom watches here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It was Christmas time and the place was very busy where I was working and pulling long, long hours and I didn't really enjoy it that much. So, you know, I was just, the baby was coming and I was just like, wow, what can I do to like change my situation? You know, and I'm just like, well, you know, maybe I can make this thing work, but also, you know, be daycare, you know, for my son as well. And I sort of just popped it on my wife. She wasn't pleased, you know, but, <laughs> you know, in the end, it was a good decision. And, and she was very understanding and you know, it, it was a risk. It was a big risk for sure. You know, the very first watches that I made were quartz because a lot of my experience was in quartz repair and that kind of thing. Um, so I really, those ones that I made at the beginning were more ladies watches, higher like end stuff because it was all like jewelry made. You know, it, um, like the cases were solid sterling silver, um, diamonds, that kind of thing. And I thought, yeah, this is, this is the way they go. You know, this is the way I want to take these things, um, which was a mistake, you know, I think for me. Um, and I learned out very, very quickly that there was, that was the, an error. You know, when I first did the one of a kind show, that very first show that I did, I exclusively had these ladies watches that were all silver, you know, $1,000 and up. And I didn't sell one piece, not one single watch sold. And kind of stepped away from that and went, uh oh. You know, maybe I made a big mistake getting into this stuff, but kind of reevaluated everything and, you know, just thought, oh, well, you know, there's this and that, and I have some experience too with some mechanical watches, and, you know, maybe I should start making stuff for men as well, because I've been working on stuff for women forever. You know, it's jewelry, and that's, I only made jewelry for women, mostly, and then, so it was just sort of where I was coming from, and, I'm glad that I, you know, figured out, you know, what I was doing wrong, because then, you know, it really opened up things for me, and actually really enjoy, you know, making the watches that I, I make now, the larger size kind of pieces. Um, but now it's come back to the ladies' watches again, you know. So it's weird how everything kind of comes sort of a full circle, you know, to that. The dial making process itself is not a from my understanding is not the way that the watch industry makes their dials at all you know like there is some laser cutting but a lot of the time it's hydraulic press stamping um, especially for indices and markers and that sort of stuff um, a lot of pad printing in the industry and i don't do any pad printing on any of my dials at all it's all laser engraved and then i hand fill all those little areas with loom using usually watch oilers which i can show you something like this so it's very very tiny little kind of needle basically yeah. you know that I sit there and I just kind of dab the the pigment in there yeah. with that so it's uh, it can be a little time consuming uh, but you know I think it gets a certain type of look you know that is a little bit different probably this year I'm going to be working on some skeletonizations of movements um, by hand so taking a movement apart, drilling holes, 
cutting with a saw like this, right? Yeah. Um, and cutouts and finishing and the whole, like, fully skeletonized my own designs by hand. Um, which is, you know, I have the tools, so that's probably the next thing that's gonna happen. Um, there's always, you know, development of new designs, new movements that I'm using, that kind of thing. That's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough balance, I find, trying to decide which thing I'm gonna or pursue next. You know, but, you know, I just have a, a long-term plan. These are the things that I want to do, and we'll see where it takes me. And it changes as I go along, so. Hey, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you been? All well, right. Thanks, you. Very good, yeah. very good. I brought a, a whole selection. Um, the newest um, limited edition, this is the, the Lydian Power mm -hmm. Reserve Turbion. Yeah. So that is a 80 hour power reserve with the power reserve indicator as well. Um, so that's the latest thing. Also the, the smaller size case for the Turbion is something that's brand new. Yeah, um, yeah. I quite like that. What's, what's the size of this case? Uh, that one's 41 millimeters. 41 millimeters? Yep. I didn't yeah, ask even if I can, I can wind oh, up. Oh, of right? course. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. So this is 41 mils? Yep. I like that size. I, I noticed, so the size of the Lydian Torbion I'm wearing today, this is 44? 44. It yep. doesn't wear like a 44. It's mm. a little, it's got, it's got a, a smaller feeling to it, which I like. I don't want it to be too, yeah. too large. No, that's kind of what I try to do with most of my watches is keep the aesthetic fairly simple. Mm -hmm. And this, um, Watch so this one and this one, these both different. Uh, the movements are skeletonized in different mm -hmm. ways. This one's yes. much more ornate. Yes. This one's a little more modern. And you do offer the ability to switch out different yeah. movements and and kind of that level of customization. Yeah. Also, know that you do. Um, uh, you'll do some of the, the Asian movements and sure. the uh, Swiss movements yep. as, as an offering. Yeah, I try to have as many options as I can for every single component that's in the watch. Mm. So hands, the case, the straps, the clasp, the movement, mm -hmm. you know, everything that's there, I can usually have some sort of option available. You right. know, even the difference between a hand wound and uh, automatics as well. You know, there are those things that I've tried to work in to make the watches fairly modular, mm -hmm. you know, so that everything is, makes it a lot so easier So if someone wants me. this case with an automatic, they yeah. can very well have that. Absolutely, sure, yeah, yep. So if we were to take these watches here, we've got quite a few in front of us, um, and lay them out in chronological order, what would be the progression from, and would we see something like in the style that, that kind of gets refined or changes or evolves over time? Um, I guess in a way. Like yeah. the Lydian was one of my original designs. Yeah. Um, now I don't have any of the really old ones here, mm -hmm. um, but there were some ladies watches that I made first yeah. that were all sterling silver cases and more intricate sort of dials with like antique wallpaper sort of patterns on them and mm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of progressed into men's watches more because uh, those ladies watches weren't really selling <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and then once I started making the men's watches with the Lydian um, and I think the Daydalian as well was one of the first ones. Mm -hmm. Then I progressed into the Tourbillon after uh, two years or something, mm -hmm. two or three years, and then also the Classic, which is the Roman numerals, yep. uh, and the Hazard at that point too. And you have a following of, of people who, who collect these, right? Like you have return customers? I do, yeah, you know, a, a absolutely. Is yep. there a piece, do you think, that they would say is the most iconic Wilk Watchworks watch? I think probably a lot of people online, like on Instagram especially, mm -hmm. they're gonna say that the Lydian Turbio mm -hmm. is probably the one that I'm known for. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, know, I think I, it is, I, I think, think it is. Know, I like, it's fantastic. I, I think the design's great, thanks. Yeah, thanks. No, it's fantastic to wear. Um, you know, it's again, I'm just trying to keep the design simple mm -hmm. and then let the movement do the work. Right. Because what do you want to see when you have a turbion? You want to see the, 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 the turbion, all right? right? So, you know, it's just, okay, keep the rest of the dial simple and clean yeah. and... Yeah. You know, it's just the time and your the fancy little spinning gadget That's right. joy. Yeah, <laughs> and even like I'm wearing the Lydian skeleton turbion. Yeah. And again, it's about, you know, keeping the movement the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I want to say my design's secondary, mm -hmm. but I think it kind of works with everything. Right. To create different types of contrasts. Right. Right, so. 
Another question I was going to ask is, have you ever made, uh, because you do so many custom orders, and uh, have you ever done a custom order for someone that either you recognize, like a, like a celebrity or someone that you admire or anything like that? Um, you ever had an order come through and you're like, hey, that's so-and-so, I'm impressed you're purchasing something from me. I haven't really had that sort of, like, you know, whoever mm. come to me and be like, hey, I want you to make a watch. Um, I have had a couple people that I didn't know who they were when they approached me, and then I found out that they were like, you know, yeah. pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, there was uh, Mason Plumley. Yeah. He plays for um, Brooklyn, I think, NBA. Yeah. Uh, I made a, a set of watches for him. Very uh, nice. When he was working, or working, <laughs> when he was playing for um, yeah. Duke University, when he was still in school. Amazing. I, I had no idea who he was when he first yeah. contacted me. Yeah. But after I Googled, then I was, he was like, oh yeah, I play for, and I was like, because I'm, I don't know anything about basketball. Yeah, you know? oh, neither do I. I know yeah, this. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, so. I, I took pottery class while other people were playing sports. <laughs> so let's just <laughs> put yeah. that out there yeah, yeah. for the internet to make fun of me. What's the best compliment that you've ever received for one of your completed works, either a commission or even just something that someone bought? What's the best kind of comment that you've received um, about a particular watch, collection, one mm. of the what you know, anything like that, that that's ever come up that, that stands out? Well, that's a tough question. I don't know if I could pick one that yeah. was like really a standout, you know, a really, um, Oh, it's really nice when people compliment and, mm. and say really great things that they love it and they wear it all the time and that kind of stuff. It's you know I'm really happy that my watches aren't sitting in a box somewhere. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they're wearable. Well, they're not yeah. have to totally baby them. You know, for you sure. Totally wear them around and not yep. have to worry about. Oh, no, for uh, sure. And you know I think a, a lot of people, you know, especially on Instagram, you know, I feel the love. That's for sure. Yeah. You know. People are posting shots of the watches all the time, and you know, very complimentary. And it's awesome. It's uh, yeah, you know, I try not to let it go to my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I think is the biggest compliment is just someone purchasing one of my watches. Yeah, you know, because it allows me to keep doing what I want to do, mm -hmm. and you know. I think it's amazing that I can make a living doing this. Yeah. You know, really, I have a huge appreciation. Um, you know, I worked a lot of years doing jobs that I didn't like. Yeah. And, you know, now that I'm doing something that I love, I really want to keep doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, I have an appreciation and, you know, for it every single day. Yeah. You know? Working away at it, getting better, you know, refining your craft as, yeah. as you go along. Uh, you know. I, I think it's important for people to move forward and, you know, keep learning and do the best that they can. Mm. You know, it's, it's what I want to do, so I'm going to want to keep getting better. Right. right, right. Well, you know, you've got quite an interesting collection here, and I think that, you know, it's really interesting to see that, you know, you kind of dove into this head first, and, and you know, mm. the fans are watching you kind of, you know, work your way into becoming a more accomplished watchmaker. And as an interesting byproduct of this process, you can buy Tourmillon for $1,300 Canadian, yeah. and I think that's, that's a pretty good byproduct of any process if you ask me so you know I think that you know it's definitely something that people appreciate and uh, you know we definitely appreciate having you here today on a blog to watch and, well thanks uh, thanks, yeah, thanks yeah, for it's having been a me pleasure out. yeah absolutely and, and talking all right man doing the same thing over and over again is really not what I'm here to do you know I really it's really important for me to be you know doing new things all the time so yeah that's definitely one of the main goals is to you know offer new things and new new watches, new designs, and you'll probably notice as the years have passed that some of the designs that I originally started with are gone. You know, I love what I do, that's for sure. It's, uh, it feels very rewarding. You know, I, accomplishing new things all the time and having happy customers, of course. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's satisfying to do what I want to do. And as hard as it is sometimes to kind of be your own boss and keep focused sometimes or, you know, and be overwhelmed totally at certain points, it's still worth it. You know, it's, I wouldn't change anything.